Okay then, so the next thing I'd like to do is to create some utility classes for this library that we're creating. Now, in a lot of other CSS libraries and frameworks, you often see classes like this, like m-4, and that would be for margin in all directions and apply it to a strength of 4. Or if you wanted padding left, we'd use a class of pl, padding left, hyphen 3, and that would be a strength of 3 in the left direction, or opacity, o-40, which would mean 40% for opacity. So we're going to generate these kind of classes in this lesson, and it is going to be a little more complex than some of the things we've been working on so far. So the first thing I want to do is create a file to create all of our utility classes in. So inside the Shinobi folder, underscore utilities.scss, like so. And then I also want to import that down here at the bottom. So at import, and it's going to be utilities, like so. All right then, so... In this utilities file now, we're going to create basically a very big map of different utilities. Now, the first thing I want to do is use the math module because we will be using that for some of the different values. So SAS math like so. Okay, and then I'm going to create a utilities map. So it's a variable, which is a map. Now, inside this map, we're going to have different properties. For example, we're going to have a utility set for padding. We might also have a utility set for padding left, which will be a map as well. And we might have a utility set for margin, which would also be a map, right? And then later on, we're going to cycle through this map. We're going to get each one of these different properties, and we're going to cycle through the different values inside that utility as well and generate classes for each one. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, just start with the padding. And in here, I'm going to, first of all, give this a prefix value. And that's going to be set equal to P. Now, this will be basically our class name, our root class name. So if we want to apply padding to something, it will be P something. And it could be P hyphen zero to strip away the padding, or P hyphen one to give it the base padding, or P hyphen two to give it the base padding times two, etc. So that's the prefix of the class. The next thing we're going to create is a property called values and this will be all the different values that we can have for padding so it could be strength one which is the base padding like i said strength two which is the base padding times two etc so this in itself is going to be a map as well all right so inside this map i'm going to say that first of all zero so it would be p hyphen zero and the value of that is going to be just the base or rather zero because we don't want any padding for p hyphen zero the next one would be one and that would be the base hyphen padding right and then we'll have two so strength two that would be p hyphen two and that would be the base padding and then we would multiply that by two now i'm going to do the same thing but i'm just going to paste these in right here so we have these different values all the way up to five will be times the base padding by eight. So now we have all these different values for our padding utility. Now we don't have classes for these yet. We're going to create those classes later on. But what I'm going to do now is just paste in another one. And this is going to be for padding left like this. So this time we would have a prefix of PL, that would be the class name, the base class name, and then the value 0 through to 5 again. This time, it's only going to apply to padding left. Now, the names of these utilities are important because they're going to match the property names, the CSS property names that we apply these classes to. All right, so I just want to leave it there for a second because what I want to do now is create some kind of SAS code down here that's going to cycle through these different utilities and generate classes for each one. So down here, again, I'm just going to paste this code in because I don't want you to watch me write this out from scratch, but I'm going to explain everything that I do here. So we're generating utility classes, right? That's what we're doing. And we're saying for each property in the map. And basically, this is the property and this is the map that we get. So normally we say key and value, but in this case, I'm being more explicit. The property name, which is the CSS property that we're going to basically apply values to, and the map for that CSS property. So for each property map, 
in utilities which is the big map we have right here that's what this is called so we're cycling through that and for each one i'm getting first of all the prefix for each property so we use the map get function to get that we've seen that before and the map we want to get the prefix from is this map right here so whatever map is associated with that property and we're getting the prefix from that map so we're storing that right here. So that could be P for margin or PL, uh, sorry, P for padding or PL for padding left. Now, the next thing we're doing is getting the values. And again, we say map get. We want the map, which is the map associated with whatever we're iterating at the minute. And we want the value property of that, which is also a map, right? So we're getting that right here, the values. So now we have the prefix, which is the base class name, and also the values, which is a map of values we want to cycle through to generate classes for each value using this prefix as well. So this time I'm using key and value, but just short versions, K and V. So for each K, V in values, which is this, we're cycling through those. If K is default, then we're basically just going to take the prefix right here. And by the way, K, is the property name so we're saying if this is ever equal to default because later on we will have some default uh, values then what we're doing is we're taking the prefix and we're just making a class out of that so it could just be for example pl on its own or p on its own now that's not the case for these because we don't have a default property but later we will so we just take that prefix and that is the class name and then also the property right here. Remember, the property is these things right here. So it could be the padding or the padding left in our case. That's the property we're applying right here. So we use the variable to create that property. And then the value of that property is just whatever value we're cycling through in the values map, right? So if default doesn't exist, which it doesn't in our case yet, then all we're doing is taking the prefix and then also saying hyphen and we're adding on K which is this value. So the prefix and then this value. So hyphen zero or hyphen one or hyphen two. And then we're applying the property here again in the selector and we're saying the value of that is V. So for, for example, PL hyphen one, it's gonna be this because this is V down here, all right? So that's generating all of these different utility classes for us. Now, if I save this, and if we go to our index file, I'm just going to open up the terminal to make sure there's no uh, errors, first of all. And there are. We can see right here we have an error. It's saying that this is an undefined variable. So let's go to the top. Have I spelt it correctly? Util it is. All right, so save it again. Now let me see. Okay, that's got rid of the error. So now if we go to the index.css file and search for PL, for example, we can see all of these different PL classes, these utility classes. So PL hyphen zero is padding left zero. PL one, padding left this, PL two, etc. And the same is gonna be true for just padding in all directions as well. All right, so that's a nice way to cycle through these utilities right here. So what I'm gonna do now is just add in a load more utilities and then we're gonna go through each one. Now I'm gonna paste these in. I'm going to copy them from my repo because there's an awful lot of these that I want to add and it would make no sense for me to write them all out from scratch. That's going to take about 20 minutes. So I'm pasting them all in and let me scroll up and let me go through each one of them quickly. So we already had padding and padding left. And remember, these are the CSS property names. They have to be the CSS property names. We also have padding right, which is PR for the prefix, the same values, and padding top, PT, same values, PB for padding bottom, same values. We do exactly the same thing then for margin. The prefix is M this time instead of P, but the values are pretty much the same, only this time we use the base margin and times that by 2468. So we have margin left, we also have margin right, we have margin top as well, and margin bottom. All right. Then we create an opacity one. So again, this is the CSS property name opacity. The prefix this time is going to be zero, and these are the values. So if we say zero, or not zero, rather, O hyphen 10, then the opacity is going to be 0 0.1. If we say O hyphen 60, it's going to be 0 0.6, etc. All right, so the next one is border radius, the property name. 
and then the prefix for this, the class base name is br for border radius. And now we have a default case. Now we'll come to that in a second, but we also have br hyphen non, which is gonna be this value, br hyphen xs for extra small, which is this. We take the border radius, the base one, and divide it by four using the math module. Small, we divide by two. Large, we take the base border radius and times it by two, and full is 50%. So this default case right here, remember, if we just add the class of BR, because the case is default, it's not going to be BR hyphen default for the class name. It's just BR because we have that if check down here. If K is equal to default as we cycle through the values, we don't tack on default to the class name. It's just whatever the prefix is, which in this case is just br right so that's what the default thing does if we just apply a class of br we get this base border radius otherwise it's br hyphen this hyphen this hyphen this or this etc all right next one is display the prefix is display values n for non b for block f for flex i for inline i hyphen b for inline block all right so font size again the prefix which is font the value, small, medium, large, XL, and extra, extra large. And we're just using these font size variables that were created earlier on. They are in the variables folder, or file rather, down here. Phew. So that's just a few different utilities we've created right here. And what we're doing now is cycling through the entire utilities map to generate classes for each one of these utilities that we've added. So it would be very easy in the future to add extra utilities as well. And you can do that if you want, you can extend this. For now, I'm just gonna save this and I'm gonna check out the index.css file, which will have absolutely ballooned because we're adding loads more classes in. You can see down here, we've got all the different directions of padding, margin, and if we scroll right down, we can see opacity, the border radius, display, and the font sizes as well. And now we can use any of these different classes inside our index file. So that's what we're gonna do right here. We're just going to output a few font sizes. So let me paste those in right here, like so. So we have an H2 first of all, and that is using a margin utility class, margin bottom two. So that's the strength of two. And if we take a look inside the index and search for MB hyphen two, we can see it's this amount margin bottom. All right. Now over here, we have the font size small inside a div, and then we have font size medium, then large, then XL, then XXL. All right, cool. We also have this HR down here with a class of MT, which is margin top of strength four, and MB of strength four, so margin bottom. So what I'm going to do is also add this HR below the other section. So below the buttons right here, just so that we can separate our different sections of this web page. I'm also going to do it below the cards down here. And then later it's going to be also below the grid system and also below the utilities. I'm going to scroll up and place it below the buttons right here. I think that's what this is. Or is it the colors? Who knows? It's the colors. All right, I think that's it now. We have it below every section. So we're using those utility classes now inside our index file. So if I save this now and preview it in a browser, then we can see all of these different utility classes taking effect. So this is the font sizes right here. And we've also got these HRs right here, which also have margin applied to them. We can see that margin if we hover over the HR tag right here. Awesome. So there we go, my friends. That is how we can generate all of these different utility classes using this utility map. If you've used Bootstrap 5, this is pretty similar to their utility methodology. They have a big map with all these different utilities and they perform code to cycle through them. Obviously a bit more sophisticated than the one we've done here, but this is a good start. And if you wanted to, you could extend this to add your own utility classes as well.